Hi everyone, welcome back to Economic Street. It's your boy Ola, back with a show that brings the city to the street, helping you understand your finances better so that you can then make decisions to better yourself financially. Now today I'm going to be taking you through a couple things that are really, you know, happening in the media and really going to have an impact going forward on people's finances. And the first one, the one that emerged today, is about inflation. Now inflation is all about how quickly prices go up over time. And the reason this is important to understand is because this makes you less well off because if things become more expensive and, for example, you stay on the same wage or salary, then you literally can't buy the same amount of stuff like food or everyday items that you need as you would have in the past uh, before inflation went up. So give you an example. Today, the announcement came out that inflation has gone up by 3% in September, year on year. Now, a 3% increase may not sound like a lot, but imagine everything that you depend on going up by 3% and you're not, your salary has not gone up by the same amount. It means that pretty much you're, you're less well off. And therefore, over time, your standard of living is going down. The situation is even more worse because that 3% is by one measurement called CPI. There's a different measurement uh, RPI, that's actually nearly 4%, it's a 3.9%, and this is going to affect um, business rates, for example. It's going to affect like um, small business owners because business rates are linked to this. So every every year, the government will put up their business rates, which is the form of council tax that businesses have to pay by what inflation goes up. And if it's at 4%, and as a business owner, you still have to pay salaries, you still have to pay electricity, your electric bills, your water, um, all that type of stuff, your rent, then, boy, <laughs> things are not looking good. Um, now, there's a few things that the government can actually do to address this problem, because all this is stemming from Brexit. Uh, Brexit made the pound lose value. The pound losing value makes it more expensive to buy stuff that we need, uh, which comes from other countries, like our food, like fruit and veg, or your electronic goods like your Apple phone that you love or your Samsung. So there's a few things to do. Number one, they can cancel Brexit, <laughs> which is undemocratic to say the least. And that's going to cause problems. Like if you, if guys, you, you see the headlines in like the newspapers, you know that this can't run. Like this option can't run. But it's still an option. The second one, which is more likely, is for the Bank of England uh, and the Bank of England are basically the people that look after the financial system, look after the banking system. They're the bank of banks. What they do, they they can set interest rates. Um, if they raise interest rate, it makes it more expensive for you and me to borrow money to spend. Now, we know a lot of us already rely on borrowing. So if it becomes more expensive to borrow because the interest rate is going up, we're going to borrow less money or not at all. If we're then not borrowing as much, we're not going to be spending as much. And if we're not spending as much, shops will be forced to lower their prices because they need to get rid of stock. And by lowering their pli by lowering their prices, this makes inflation start to fall, which is good for all of us. And it's a win. On the flip side, this is where the situation gets a bit more complex because, number one, the Bank of England so far has not really indicated that they're going to raise rates because... Oh, and this has actually made the pound fall even more today, <laughs> which may actually coincidentally make inflation worse. But to top it off, the catch-22 is that if they, raise in, if they do raise interest rates, this can be a negative because already, if you're maxed out on your borrowing, you're, not, you're now going to be paying higher monthly repayments to finance or to pay back your credit card bills, your, your personal loans, your car loans, that type of thing. So it can really make it difficult um, for people. The people that do benefit are the, those that save money because if interest rates go up, logically speaking, you're going to be earning more on your savings. Um, you're going to earn more interest. Now, all this kind of just raises a bigger sort of question for all of us, man. Um, <laughs> which is the issue of capitalism and whether it's working or not. Now, capitalism, as a radio host nicely summed up yesterday, is about the exercise of capital. 
And capital is what makes the world go around. It's what makes the West function, the West work the way it does. And the more capital you have, the more power. But how do you get capital? Because <laughs> at the moment, especially if you're a millennial like myself, young person, you're kind of shafted because of the fact that it's not easy to get on a property ladder anymore, which was the main form of acquiring capital. So how exactly are you benefiting from the system that doesn't seem to be working for you at the moment? You're paying into it because, you know, if you're, an, if you're, an, if you're employed, you're paying taxes, so you're contributing to the system, but you're not seemingly benefiting from it. You're living at home longer with your parents, so frustration is creeping in. And this is why someone like Corbyn is getting a lot more popular and people don't seem to understand why he's so popular with the young people and spanked the Conservatives in the last election um, by securing most of the young people vote. But it's so simple. If someone is offering you a different solution, which is most um, economically friendly, um, more socially mobile, surely you're going to go for it. But is it really that straightforward? How do you actually solve the problem of capitalism not working? I mean, I've got my own solutions and I'm going to share them with you. Number one, it comes down to the fact that we need to understand how money actually operates. Now, in our last podcast, we talked about the fact that most money is actually not, you know, your pound notes or your coins in your wallet. It's actually credit. So about 95% of all money in the world is credit, which is, you know, your ability to borrow money that you don't have and pay it back at a future date. So that includes your credit cards, your car loan, your student loan, and your mortgage. Now, if it's all based on credit, credit is something that's been created by man, and therefore, it can be manipulated. Now, it's about being able to give people back access to credit, and if not, get other institutions access to credit. So I'm I'm going somewhere with this. We know that at the moment, individuals and households are kind of maxed out on borrowing like we're crazily in debt i think the average borrow borrowing is like for households is like 13k and that excludes like student loan so you can tell we're maxed out companies aren't going to borrow to invest if they can't make money from people like you and me it's as simple as that so that leaves government they they're the third person that can borrow money and spend now It's so cheap to borrow at the moment because interest rates are so low. Why is the government not borrowing money? If you borrow now, something that Corbyn has been suggesting, you can then spend that money on things like infrastructure, so building roads, building new hospitals, improving healthcare uh, services, public services, um, airports, all that type of stuff. That creates jobs. More jobs means more income. More income means more spending, and so on and so forth. Alternatively, what, and this is the one that some people may not like, is give everybody like a one-off balloon payment. So, you know, during the recession, the, the government kept pumping money into the banks to make sure they didn't go out of business. Why can't you just do that with everybody in society? Just give them like a windfall, give them an income, like a one-off payment, or give them a one-off tax break which also sort of creates more income. By creating this, by doing this, these people can then pay down debt, start spending more, and hopefully by spending more, it allows companies to give people pay rises, which we haven't had in a long time, or create create jobs, which is a win-win for everybody. So this is just a couple of things that I wanted to throw out. Like, we need to start addressing the fact that the young generation are being left behind. We're already on track to be worse off than all generations before us. So, like, this can't continue to run. If this, if the, if something doesn't change, people are going to get more frustrated. It's going to lead to civil unrest, probably, and it's not just going to be. It's not going to be good for morale. So, government really needs to start taking a look at themselves and finding tangible solutions to help everyday people because I ain't gonna lie to you this is annoying me now I myself I'm feeling I'm feeling it going to the shops is more expensive everything is just expensive 
Like, I think Apple now are going to be charging like a grand for their phone. Like, it's just, it's madness. Like, this can't actually run. So if I'm going to be in this in this system, this system needs to work for me. Otherwise, stop allowing me to be able to, and I'm, they, need, they need to be careful about this one, which I'm about to say, but they need to allow people to start borrowing a lot more. As long as they're responsible, they're using that money to acquire assets. Assets being things that will make you money. Not just going out and buying trainers or just going on holiday, which you ain't gonna gonna see that money again. So I mean and the host raised this the of like when I was listening to the radio the other day, the host was talking about how when he first bought his first property he got a mortgage that was 105%. <laughs> now, just think about that. So he got more money than the value of the property. So he had change spare to either do up the house, buy buy furniture, or just even go shopping. 105%. Like, I ain't heard of that. If I want to get a mortgage these days, I need to come with at least, you know, 15 to 25% deposit. This man did not need a penny. And that was what? He said that was about, what, 13 to 15 years ago? So in that short space of time, all this has changed. Like, oh boy, it, it's, it's starting to get on my nerves. So we really just need to start getting smart with understanding how money works, knowing how to play the system. Like, this is what I always say to people. You just got to get smart. Starting point, have a good credit rating. Having a good credit rating gives you access to credit. And once you have access to credit, you can start looking for ways to borrow that money and invest it in something that will make you money, i.e. generate future capital for you. It's as simple as that. So that may be through property. It could be through the stock market. It could be through starting a business and investing in yourself. Um, and there's a few other things. So that's the starting point. Work on your credit. Start budgeting properly with the money you already earn as well. So, you know, if you're earning a salary and you've got expenses every month, just rather than spend what's left over, save it, start building up a pot of money and using that to towards um, what you can call life goals. Life goals being you want to buy a property or you want to start saving for kids or you want to you know, go to uh, let it go towards a wedding, or you can do the other way, which is basically build up your net worth, and from that, you know, create wealth that will last, not just for you, but for your kids and your grandkids. Because we ain't gonna ever have it as good as it used to be for our parents and our grandparents. Like that's like that's just a fact. Like you just have to, it's real real talks. You have to get down with it. So it's time to start learning the game, know how the game is played and win it because ain't nobody giving you nothing out here, not even Corbin. Like, Corbin, I like some of the things he's saying, but number one, he's not even a power yet. Number two, once he gets into the power, can he deliver on all these things that he's been saying? So, yeah, it's, boy, the future is in your hands. Like, you need to, you need to really take it and make it work for yourself because... Yeah, if you ain't getting it for yourself, ain't nobody going to give it to you no more. So, yeah, that's just a couple of things I wanted to address. Inflation and capitalism because, boy, that's the talk of the day. With Brexit, Brexit is not going is not going away and talks are deadlocked. So if things continue to be deadlocked, like the economic situation is just going to get worse. So you just need to start understanding how to manage that as best as you can. And boom, like... <laughs> Yeah, keeping it real, just make the most of it. Anyway, if if you have any questions, send them through. I'll be happy to answer them. Let me also know your thoughts and your comments because, yeah, I'm still learning as well. Um, and I like to hear from you listeners. You're the one that give me more more content to put out there. So, yeah, um, shout back and stay tuned. Keep it locked. Definitely share this with your friends. Hit the subscribe button as well on our channel on YouTube. Follow us on YouTube. Uh, social media we're on facebook twitter instagram linkedin yeah so reach out to us and it'll be nice to hear from you till next time stay tuned for more